What is up guys? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the good old native instruments, supercharger GT, my boy GT. No, I'm not talking about dragon ball GT. Um, that's a whole another video. Supercharger GT is a fantastic effects plugin that can give you great tube compression, gives a lot of drive and grit to your sound, uh, gives it a lot of character and saturation. There's three important key things that we want to look at when using uh, this effect. So here I have a, a simple bass patch that I created uh, a few days ago, just called it Fat Bass. So let's go ahead and play this back for you. Something very basic. Let's go ahead and route this to number one and let's open the mixer. Everything here is just empty. so. Let's go ahead and throw in the supercharger. Now, if you're using the standard supercharger, you are missing some components here, but the idea is still similar and works the same. There's just a few additions to the supercharger GT. So let's make a basic MIDI here. All right, cool. Now, we aren't driving anything here yet. So you can see with Supercharger GT, there's a few important things you wanna look at. Uh, with this init patch we have, we have the input trim. So input trim dictates the level that is entering Supercharger. So this is very useful because you'll see this light illuminate yellow. And you see how it went red. So as long as it's mostly in the yellow, you're good. When it does enter the red, it means that the input signal is too loud. And what you can do is trim it. You can reduce that level. So we'll bring it down minus two. Essentially, you'd want it to the point where it's staying yellow um, and turns off, obviously, when there's no audio coming through. So I think maybe minus three will work. Yeah, minus three, minus four should be okay. So that's good. Um, of course, if the level is too low, we're not going to have enough input here. And you don't want it going crazy high because then you can see it's destroying the signal through the gain reduction there. So again, find that sweet spot. It's okay if you go a bit too high um, because some people might route many sounds to Supercharger GT if you have uh, a ton of sounds going through one send. But here with minus four, we're okay. You can use this section here. Uh, I don't use this. I don't use the side chain or the high pass. This applies like a subtle, it's kind of sounds like a 12 dB curve high pass to the sound that you're sending through. So I don't use this because if I'm doing it to a lead, I'm usually high passing it through um, maybe DMG audio equality or fab filter or a different EQ or your DAWs EQ. The Second important thing, so we kind of covered input trim. So just find that sweet spot. You can always test it out by just tapping on a send on a signal. And when you see it disappear, you're good. You're okay. So we're good. We're good there. Now you do have the saturation knob. So saturation knob is going to add some more harmonics in our sound. Let's go a bit more extreme so we can hear the difference. And it has three different characters there, mild, moderate, and hot. You can see the hot is very extreme. But this does let you get kind of like that sizzling hot saturation, if that is the sound that you really desire. So with a sound like this, for instance, mild is really just going to give you a little bit of enhancements of the existing harmonics um, without crushing it too much. Moderate is somewhere in between, with it really being quite, you know, uh, evident at that around that seven to seven to ten, and then hot. Uh, hot gives you a very hot is very hard to balance with your other sounds. So hot is going to give you kind of like that blaster jacks, um, uh, similar to fire beats. You you see hear a lot of leads that are 
and sounds that are really, really just ripped apart. So that's definitely going to be used through something like this, through a hot saturation. So again, that's going to be dictated by your original sound and the desired sound you want. But here in this instance, let's just go moderate. We'll just put it at three. Um, sometimes I'm very conservative with this, like anywhere from like 1.25 to like two. Uh, because keep in mind, if you're going to drive and really saturate this sound, it needs to balance with your other elements as well. So I'm going to put this at 1.5. And let's come over to the compression side. This is very handy, the output, because you can see here the amount of gain reduction being applied and the output. So two important things here. So as you raise this knob, you can see that the gain reduction is going down, the output signal is going down, it's squishing the signal. And you have two knobs here that make it very easy. If you guys want to really enter it with simplicity, I really love these knobs. Attack and release. So of course, attack is how fast is that compressor going to um, react to the signal when it exceeds the threshold and release. How fast does it go back to the uncompressed signal or back to uh, a state of the uncompressed sound. So you can see this gain reduction being applied. If we put a very short release, you can see it comes back to zero dB very fast. If we extend that release. So depending on what you're sending through here, if you guys have something that is, you know, something that wants to be very silky and smooth and have a very extended compression, you might want to have it a bit longer. Usually, uh, the sounds that I'm working on, the bass sounds that you hear in uh, Vegan Smoothie, um, even No Fat Police, some of the other tracks, I'm usually going for the slam preset. Very fast attack, very fast release to make sure that it kind of comes in, in and out very fast. And we can see that here. Now, this is very extreme. I would probably recommend kind of in this range, I'm usually... I start very slow and I see how much I want to compress the signal because you can see here when it's uncompressed it's kind of hovering around here around that minus eight so if we bring it up now it does seem like supercharger is doing some uh, automatic gain compensation for the compression that's taken place as well so take in mind, this is kind of like a, not so much like the FL sound goodizer, but it's kind of like the one knob louder by waves with kind of some more character. Um, I wouldn't use this. It's hard to use this in a mastering application. Um, it's de definitely awesome on bass sounds and leads and drums. And I would probably say if you are happy with your original sound going into supercharger, you're probably gonna have some light compression. So let's leave it around, let's just say, let's say three. And to compensate, to bring up this signal, we can adjust this output knob. Let's bring it plus 0.5. Cool, so we're in the same range. We've applied some gain reduction, has a fast attack, fast release. And we're gonna go over this character knob in just a moment. Let's just compare the dry, wet, and you have a dry wet knob here. So 100% dry, no effect. You can see it adds that grittiness, you know? We've actually haven't driven these knobs too much, but it does give a nice um, kind of character, much like FabFilter Saturn. If you guys don't have Supercharger, give a, sh a check to uh, Saturn. I do use Saturn and Supercharger together. A lot of times it's good to use uh, saturators um, over and over. Having one saturation and then another level of saturation can really bring out some nice details in your sounds. But sometimes it's it's easy to overuse these plugins. So always take that with a grain of salt. You want to use these um, very carefully. Really drive up the knob slowly and find that sweet spot where you're like, oh shit, you know, I can hear the sound, I can hear what it's doing but I don't want to go extreme and just obliterate it and make it just, you know, uh, 
white noise in the listener's ears. So that sounds cool. It's given it kind of a little bit of a punch, a bit of warmth. And the character is much like a uh, added EQ, kind of a smart EQ, much like the Waves One Knob Brighter. There's three different presets here, fat, warm, and bright. And to summarize it, the fat is basically emphasizing a lot of the low end, um, sub, sub frequencies and the bass frequencies anywhere from like, let's say, zero to uh, 120, 150 is being amplified while also reducing some of the harsh high end. So usually fat is taking out some of the mid highs, boosting some of the very high and boosting the lows. Warm is going to take your sound and make it effectively warmer. So it's going to give it some warmth. It's going to give it some low end, kind of that analog feel without being too bright, without being too harsh. And if you have vocals that need to pop out, a lead that needs to pop out, something that is kind of the forefront of your track, usually would recommend using the bright. So let's see how each individual one sounds. So you can see the fat is definitely giving it some more warmth. It's giving it some nice drive in that low end um, with a bit more detail in the very highs. Let's go to warm. Warm as well, giving some boost to the low end uh, while taking away some and cutting off some of the high end. And finally, let's go to the bright. That's probably my favorite. Yeah, bright, it seems like it's giving it an overall character, but mostly in the high end, you know, um, kind of like in that 4K, 6K and beyond range to make it really pop out. If your synths are lacking um, some high end and you've done your best in the synth, you've done your best to add it in EQ, um, definitely give a shot to adding it through this bright character. On the other hand, if you have something that is very bassy, boomy, and you want it to sit um, beneath some vocal layers, some leads, you might want to experiment with the fat or the warm. Um, I haven't messed up with this, this uh, stereo link mode, because most of the signals that I'm sending through here are stereo sound. I'm, I don't really bother doing it in a mono state or do mid side processing. So I haven't experimented with this, the stereo mode. Uh, I just leave it in the default and I'll suggest if you guys are starting out with this plugin to do the same. And uh, that pretty much summarizes it for you guys. Uh, I really love this plugin and uh, I use it primarily for all of the character compression, saturation, and also as an adjustment. It's really great to adjust your sounds um, before they're entering the mixer stage. I usually do that a lot to give me an added layer of uh, kind of like uh, extra headroom so that I can additionally adjust it on the mixer level if I really need to. So that pretty much summarizes it. Let's give you guys a kind of another uh, dry to wet comparison. So again, we have 1.5 moderate, three to one ratio, uh, two for the brightness. And let's go ahead and test that out. Let's drive it a bit more. So you can see it definitely gives that, that nice little touch, nice little cherry on top. And if you guys are thinking that your sound is lacking that kind of extra grittiness, that high end, and you want to apply it in an easy way, look no further than this plugin. Um, I'll link it below. Check it out on Native Instruments website. Um, they did have the Supercharger plugin free for a while, but I think that was just a promotional offer. So definitely get your hands on this plugin. It is fantastic. I can't speak for how easy it is to use. It's available as 32-bit and 64-bit. If you guys enjoyed this video, please show me some love and smash that like button. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button and explain to me uh, what you guys thought. What are you guys using? If you guys use a tube compressor like this, what are your favorite plugins? Because I would love to review them as well. And I'm going to be working on more review videos just like this. 
Um, nonetheless, I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys. Take it easy and keep making them gains. Take care. Yeah, vegan. Smiley.